So you all have been at home for almost a week now with your children, and if you haven't been all week, at some point you're going to find that you want to start structuring your days differently than you may typically do, like on a weekend. So I wanted to start a series of instructional videos for you all on important topics as you tackle this. I'm going to break each video down into a specific topic to make it a little bit easier for you, and then I will also try to put together some documents, but I feel like videos might be the best way to, to convey information to you all. Um, and then if you have follow-up questions, we can talk on the phone, we can do video conferencing, we can email back and forth, um, but I feel like that's the best way for me to start getting some information out to you. The first topic um, I think is sort of the broad main topic is the idea of a schedule. While you're home for extended periods of time where you really can't go out into the public other than walks, which I highly encourage. Um, a schedule is going to be really imperative to your well-being and the well-being of your child. Um, how you choose to structure that depends a little bit on what you want your day to look like, how much time you have to work individually with your child, if there are other children at home. Everybody is going to have different considerations to take into account when thinking about this. Um, my children, for instance, I have it in 30-minute chunks written down on a sheet of paper. Um, that may not be what you want to do, but what you want to think about are the areas of activities that you can do. So I suggest that every day your child is doing chores twice a day, so some morning chores, some afternoon chores. I suggest that every day your child have some period of time, and this really should be 15 to 20 minutes tops, of just free time to do something that they enjoy. You may want to save their absolute favorite things as only for earning and not let those be during their free time, um, but if you feel like you have really limited options on what they would do for 15 to 20 minutes alone, then maybe that will also be their items that they earn when they're working with you. Um, I gave you all independent work and some independent play activities. So a time each day where they do some independent work and do some independent play would be smart. Um, I have been doing with my children every day um, a cooking activity, an art activity, some sort of gross motor activity, and a science-based activity. So for gross motor, I sent you all some links to um, different websites that are fun. There's a cosmic yoga for kids that's really cool. All of your children have the ability to imitate things they're seeing so they could certainly attempt the yoga especially if you do it with them. Um, and then the other one that the kids really like is um, uh, what is it called? Uh, I'm having a hard time thinking of the website but I sent it to you as well. Um, when that comes to my mind I'll tell you that one as well but it's a bunch of videos of singing and dancing it's a lot of movement other great gross motor things if you don't have trampolines and tunnels and swings um, you can set up a pillow fort you can set up a crash pad um, a really cool activity that I saw is taking painters tape in a hallway and taping different paths through the hallway and you have to crawl under and over the tape which I think is super cool um, so those would be good gross motor activities that you can do. Science activities, you can go online and find really basic science activities. Things like baking soda and vinegar to make an explosion. It's cool, it's quick, it's easy. Making slime is a great one. I did a fluffy slime with my kiddos yesterday. Um, you can also do elephant toothpaste, which is a really fun one. I also did that with my children. Um, limited supplies that you need. So um, something sciency, which is hands-on, sensory-based, it's going to look cool, sound cool, feel cool when you do it, um, that's a good activity to do. You can also create sensory bins at home if you have rice or dried beans or pasta, kinetic sand, Play-Doh, get a bin, put it in, um, and have time to play with those things. You can hide items in rice, pasta, etc. and have them find the items and take them out, put them in a bowl. You can put items in Play-Doh, do the same thing. If you have multiple things you hide, you can have them sort them. Um, these are all good things that you can do with a sensory bin. 
for the independent work, you should have file folders that I gave you. And basically, you're setting it up so that they have to do this set of work by themselves. And when they complete it, they get to do earn time. So before they sit down for independent work, you're going to find out what they're earning. Um, independent play is the same way. Puzzles and activities like that, you put them out for them in a designated area. You set a time aside that you want them to play by themselves appropriately. And... Um, most of our kiddos will be happy just on that playtime, but if you want to give an earn time for that independent play, if they're being really needy and you want to praise the ability to go play without your engagement with them, then you can give them an earn time for that as well. Um, other things that you can do on your schedule, cooking is an awesome activity. I have been cooking like crazy with my own children. It's systematic, it's steps, it's hands-on, it's fun. You can do um, all kinds of things with cooking and either the product is something that you give to the rest of your family so your kids are getting an opportunity to cook something for somebody else if they're picky eaters or if you've got um, food restrictions you can look up recipes and try new stuff and work on exposing them to new foods. Um, also, art is a really, really great activity to do with your kiddos as well. It can be very basic. I sent home coloring books um, and some painting with water, I think. Any type of activity that you do with art is great. Um, it's always autumn or it's always fall, has 20 great activities for art that have really cool products, but really simple steps. Um, but even if you just take a coloring book and you put the boundaries in for the different colors and you work on coloring in the boundaries and using different colors, that's a great art activity. Um, you can work on handwriting if that's appropriate for your kids within that as well. And then working on direct instruction. I'm going to be working on instructional videos for each of you on programs that we're doing for your kiddos that you can then trial at home. So this would be a time that you would sit with your kiddo um, and you would do some of what we do at our school with them. This is a great opportunity for you guys to learn this stuff because the more you do it at home under normal circumstances, the better our approach is at school. So this is kind of a, while it's a difficult time, it's really a cool time to kind of get you guys up to speed with being able to do some of this stuff at home. So that's really the schedule. Some of you I sent home your actual schedule. Um, I can help you if you're trying to put pictures together. Um, others of you have kiddos that you can just write it down and write a checklist. Maybe you can draw really well. I can't. You can draw an impromptu schedule and make it a checkoff sheet. Um, so if you have questions about specifically how to do the showing them visually how to follow the schedule, let me know. But those are kind of the the ways that I would um, break up your day. I'd also do an outside time, go for a walk, do something outside depending on what you have available. Um, so that's kind of the outline for the schedule.